Hello everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another live stream here at my YouTube channel. Today is a special live stream because, well, you guys know, if you've been watching, April was supposed to be stencil month, but it seems like everything I'm inspired to do does not involve stencils. <laughs> So we might have to revisit stencil month again, just so we can get more stencil cards in, but I'm not giving up on it. For tonight, I'm going to be doing some special mail art. Um, so this mail art is specifically for my friend Christopher, who, who owns Brutus Monroe. He's the creative genius behind Brutus Monroe. We were on the phone earlier today and he mentioned something about how he keeps submitting his address for mail art and he's never picked. And I was like, what? I have never seen your address. So, so we are rectifying that situation tonight. I happen to know that he loves Lego and I hope he doesn't mind. I'm going to put him on blast. He sent me just, he sent me many pictures of his growing Lego collection, but, um, I'm just going to show you a little portion of one of the first photos he ever sent me because he puts together lots of Lego and we have bonded over this. I hope he doesn't mind me putting him on blast. He, he has quite the collection. He is quite the connoisseur of Lego and he actually collects a lot of things. Okay, hold on. Let me find one. I'm trying to like zoom in on one because I don't want to like give anything away that he wouldn't want shown. Okay, well, here we go. Here's one. He knows that I love all of the flower Lego sets. So he sent me this picture of his flower Lego sets. He's got a little tree over here and got the wild, the wildflower bouquet is one of my favorites. So anyway, tonight's envelope is Lego themed and I had to do quite a bit of prep work because there's a lot of little circles on this and it took a while. The first thing I did was I measured it and I planned out my card in Adobe Illustrator. This is one of those times when it benefits me that I am a graphic designer. So I have these tools at my fingertips that I can use. And I ended up making myself kind of like a DIY stencil. I tried to cut it out of vellum so it would be a little thinner, but that was, a disaster. So it's out of paper, but it's like all the little dots. And then I've left a spot for a street address. But the whole plan is that I'm going to create his initials. Can you guys see that? It might not be very visible yet, but there's a C here and then an A for Christopher Allen. And then the rest of it is all going to be one color of Lego. So, and I've also picked out special stamps. I have no clue if Christopher is a fan of these particular mm, characters, I would say, that are on the postage stamps, but they are all vintage. They are all no longer sold. I thought he would appreciate them. Um, especially because one of them actually has a brand new Lego set out right now. And once we get to the postage stamps, we will talk about that because I really want that set, but I can't justify the cost. Anyway, I have random sticky spots on my mat. I'm so sorry. I have to take a moment and get rid of this because it is so annoying. I'm not sure what the stickiness is from. What is that? It's like purple. Oh, it's probably paste from the card that I made last week. <laughs> shows you how often I'm over here. Okay. So I did a little trial run to make sure that I could make the let this, like these dots look like Lego. And I think I've nailed it. Here we go. I just have to color them like that. I'm so excited. I think it's going to be really fun. Also my nails tonight, I did a little nail stamping today on them. They've got like a, it's almost like a, like a alcohol ink sort of pattern on it. It's interesting, right? I think if you did the pattern in like a gold, it could look like marble or stone. Anyway, so that was interesting. The particular, um, like the specifics on my nails are listed down below in the video description. All right, let's get going here. So this is a whole lot of coloring tonight. Thanks Sika. I like the green too. 
All right, so this is gonna be, here you go, now you can see it a little bit better. I've picked out some different colors of Copic markers that will match the stamps. And I've also, oh, sorry, I'm gonna zoom out for a minute because this is, it doesn't like this. I'm gonna have to zoom out. Okay, there we go. I've taken a piece of cardstock and put it inside the envelope to catch any bleeding from the markers. Okay, so let's get going here. Basically with my colors, I have a light, medium, and a dark for each one. And the medium color is what is going to go around the dots for each segment. So I want this one to be red and I want it to have a really sharp edges because this is going to be one of the individual blocks that start to create the letter C. So I'm just going around each area and I'm noticing that this paper really grabs the ink. This is a, a white envelope from Paper Source. So it's not my usual cardstock. Now that I'm thinking about it, if I would have thought ahead, I should have made a DIY envelope and just made it out of some Nina Classic Crest Solar White. I think that would have been a smarter move, but that's okay. We'll get this going here. Okay, so you do the medium color right there, and then you take the lighter shade and fill in the circles. Right? Okay, and then you take the dark shade, and I'm gonna add a little shadow that's kind of to the bottom left corner. So I'm just gonna add just like that much. So it's just gonna add a little shadow. I'm gonna take the medium color again and I'm just gonna try to blend that in. And as I get going here, I might start to get more lazy. <laughs> Okay, and then taking a white gel pen and I'm adding a highlight in the opposite corner. I guess circles really don't have corners, but we're pretending. You guys know what I mean, right? Okay, so and then when I color the, the grid around it, the block around it, I'm going to add shadow underneath as well so that it looks like this block is sitting on top of one of those big base blocks. That's the plan. We'll see how long this takes <laughs> because I kind of anticipate it taking a long time tonight. Okay, I'm onto my purples. I'm using V01, V12, and V15. So I'm going to take the medium shade once again, which is V12. And I'm going to color the medium area first. And while I've got the purples out, I'm just gonna go ahead and color another one. So I'll do another one over here. I feel like I need to turn on some music because I'm probably gonna run out of things to talk about. This is a lot of coloring. I don't know what I was thinking doing this live. Normally, if I was doing this for like a regular video, I would like turn on a podcast or a movie or something and just color to my heart's content for like three hours. <laughs> Okay, I'm using the lightest shade right there in the middle, and then I'm taking the darkest shade. Just to make sure I kind of get the shadows in the same spot, I'm gonna tip my paper. We just want it, the shadow to sort of hug the dots. Go back to my medium shade and just sort of Blend that out just a tiny bit. And then 
like I did with the red, I'm going to do a little bit of white gel pen. I just saw someone in the comments question what color I'm going to make the base plate. It's going to be classic gray. <laughs> I'm hoping that'll help the, the letters stand out. Okay. I'm going to put these caps back on. And I'm going to go back to the red. And I'm going to do some red over on this one too. Because then I can just put the red ones aside, you know? And I totally just took off the chisel end. Let's put that cap back on. <laughs> Christopher, I'm going to frame it. <laughs> you need like some special Lego frame for it. <laughs> All right, I'll do this one down here. I texted Christopher like nine minutes before going live and I said, you might want to watch my live tonight, just saying. And I'm afraid that putting the title on the video on the live stream gave it gave away the surprise, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Using the lightest shade for the dots. Then I'll do the darkest for the shadow. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of the medium shade. All righty. And then I missed one little spot right there. There we go. And then once again, that white gel pen. Just for a little highlight. I love that you all are talking about Legos in the comments. I love that. All right, going on to another uh, color group. We're gonna go to orange. So here are my orange colors. All right, let's do mm -hmm. I'll go right here. So I went around and I kind of decided what size of these pieces I was going to use. I think you could also just make the whole entire thing, you know, all one, one thing. So this is all one color and this is all one color, but I thought, no, we're, we're gonna be creative. If we can make it whatever color we want, we're gonna do that. All right, add a little bit of that shadow. Go back to the medium shade. And I'm actually not even gonna worry about erasing any of my pencil lines because I think once everything's colored, it's hardly gonna show. All right, put that highlight on. While I've got the orange colors out, let's go ahead and do another orange. Let's do it right here and we'll finally, we'll finish off this whole little segment. Okay, so I have to tell you guys about the event that I'm teaching for Brutus Monroe in July. That's the impetus for me and for Christopher becoming friends. Um, he does this event every year. Act he does a few events throughout the year. There's one in the summertime, I believe, that's called um, Create Your Own Ending. I think that's what it's called. And he's done it for a number of years. And normally in the past, he teaches the whole event himself, but you know, his business has grown and he's got uh, family and life things that get in the way. I mean, it's a commitment to teach like a, a really big event like that. So he invited me and Jennifer McGuire, Kathy Zilski and Laura Basson to teach some classes during the event. And 
something that's really, really neat about this event is that you get all new product and he is like right there designing the product for the event. And that was what our call was about today. Cause we were kind of solidifying my ideas for what I wanted to teach and whatever. And he told me what the other teachers have planned. And let me just tell you, it's going to be really good. It's going to be real good. <laughs> At, registration is still open. Um, it, it's a kind of a different event, like online event, because um, the there's actually a small group of people that are in the Virtus Monroe store in Pittsburgh, and they're taking it live with Christopher there. But then they also stream it online to people on the internet. So, so if you are, cannot be there in person, which I think those are sold out anyway, those in-person seats. If you can't be there in person, you can do the virtual at home version, which is really kind of fun. It sounds like it's going to be a really fun event. I'm just saying, and registration is open. Go get your seat. It's July 17th, 18th, 17th. I think Christopher, you might have to like put in the chat, like what it is. I've got a link down below in the video description. All right. I'm going on to blues. Hopefully. Once we get going here, once I get to the gray, it's going to go a whole lot faster. Okay. Starting with my mid color. Mm, let's do, let's do blue right here. In fact, um, I think I saw Andrea in the chat or maybe Amanda, if one of you will grab that link to the class and throw it in the chat, I would be forever grateful. If you guys aren't here, I can take a moment and just go copy and paste it from the video. All right, so I'm gonna take my lightest shade, put that right there, and then do the shadow. Go back to my mid-tone. And add my highlight. That's a really pretty blue. I like that. All right, let's do, I'm going to do two blue uh, sections on this one over here since I've got quite a few more blocks to color over on the letter A. We'll do this one up here too. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Andrea. You guys know I have an obsession with Brutus Marner embossing powder, the alabaster and also gilded. And I'm so excited because Christopher said he was going to send me some more. <laughs> and apparently he has like an absurdly large container of the alabaster that he was going to send to me as an April Fool's joke. <laughs> which just cracks me up just even thinking about it, even though it, it didn't happen. I think it's just hilarious. You guys, you can still send it. Oh, an embossing powder discount for the live. Yes. Sweet. For those who are watching the replay and you might not have the chat up, Christopher just said that he might be able to convince the boss, AKA himself, that we need a discount code for embossing powder over at the Brutus Marno shop. Oh, I forgot to do that one up there. Let's fill that in. Okay, I'm trying to like make it as, you know, like kind of reinforce the circle. You know, give it a good shape. Okay. 
basically Christopher and I are the same person. We've bonded over Lego. Then we bonded over talking about Peloton classes and <laughs> our love for Peloton. We had an interesting conversation. Our conversation was about 45 minutes long and 30 minutes of it was not even talking about what we were supposed to be talking about. <laughs> it's just, it cracks me up. Okay, going on to yellow. Here are my yellow shades and I'm hoping these are different enough that they show up, but we'll see. I don't know. They might not be different enough. Cause like the medium and all the, what's the word? Light shade are kind of really similar. So we'll see if I can get this to work. You know, I'll do another yellow right here. All right, and then I'm gonna do the, oh yeah, the lighter shade is like practically the same color. That's okay. We will define the area with our shadow right here. Erica says she has discovered why everyone loves the Brutus Minor embossing powder. It is really lovely. All right, then we'll get the highlights. I think this is a time when not erasing my pencil lines is probably going to work to my advantage because that yellow is so light. Okay, I think I'm gonna do this in purple and then this one. Oh, I don't know. I've got to figure out because those are the only colors I have, but I've got two more spots. I guess I could add another color. Let's see, what other colors are in the stamps? Those are really all the colors. Hmm. Okay, well, I think red right here will look nice. So let's do another red down here, and then we'll figure out what's gonna go up there. Maybe orange? Maybe more red. Red would work. I like the red. I think we're gonna do red. All right, here's my mid-tone color again. Uh-oh, I'm being messy. I'm trying to be faster and I'm not keeping my circles looking like circles. That's okay. Yeah, I think it, red would go really well right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do red. I'm gonna outline my circles really carefully. Maybe I will turn on some music because this is a lot of coloring. You know what, there, there's no green on the postage stamps that I picked. Um, well, Christopher told me one of the reasons why the embossing powder is so good, but I don't know if it's like a trade secret, so I don't wanna say. I will say that they create it themselves in-house. and that it takes a little bit longer to create it. The embossing powders. Okay, I'm gonna be able to fix that circle by, uh, 
Oh, where did I? I totally forgot to do this one. There we go. Yes, the Brutus Monroe Gold is so good. Gilded. They might have another shade of gold, but I just, I found Gilded and it was the perfect gold shade for me and I've never looked back. <laughs> Alrighty. Add some highlights. The orange is a nice orangey orange, right? Like it looks like an actual like fruit, like that color of orange. Okay, so I'm gonna do black over here. So I might as well just, well, I'm gonna use, I have to back up here. First, I'm going to erase that line that's coming out right there. I'm gonna define the area and then I can just fill it all in with the black. You know what I just realized? I totally forgot to have a space for his full name. Good thing this is pencil, right? All right, I'm just gonna have to get my ruler and I'm just gonna take it up one more row. All right, not a huge deal. I'm just glad I figured this out now before I colored in all the gray. All right. Cause I'm gonna need room to his actual full name. All right, and then I'm just going to, not that they're gonna show through the black, but I'm gonna erase those dots. Okay, resuming coloring. <laughs> just write small, that would be very small. <laughs> looking a little wobbly, but that's okay. Oh, the color I'm using is 110 Special Black. I don't know why it's special. It's black. Hey, Sophie! She's down there doing her little cry. Sophie! I don't wanna like scream in your ears like into my microphone, but I don't think she can hear me. <laughs> so I might have to mute myself so I can scream a little louder. I think she like just does these weird cries when she doesn't know where we are in the house. Okay, now we're just doing five million gray circles. Okay, so my colors that I've chosen, and I'm gonna keep them capped except for the one I'm using. Um, N1 is the lightest, N3 is the middle, and N5 is the darkest. So I'm going to do N3, and I'm gonna color it just the same as I did all the other stuff. So yeah. And I guess I'll just start up here in this top corner and you know what I'm realizing? When I was planning this out, I almost drew lines. I wasn't gonna have it be a base plate. It was gonna be a bunch of individual Legos, but it's a base plate. So I just needed to erase that. Okay. All right, so I'm going around. Each circle.
and then I'm going to connect them and I lost some circles when I erased that up there. So just so someone was asking how I got all the circles, I created a little template with my Cricut. So, all right, I'm just gonna get those ones. There we go. Sorry, my camera doesn't like that apparently. So we're gonna be here for 10 years coloring little circles. Yeah, I'm trying to think of if I have any fun stories to tell you. Y'all, I've been doing these live streams for so long, you've heard all my stories. Oh, hey, Diana. Um, yeah, so I, Diana's asking how I did this. Basically, I just traced on a bunch of circles. <laughs> I created that template using my Cricut and then I traced on all the circles and I figured out where I wanted to create the letters and then here we are. And now we're doing the outer area which is a base plate, one of those big base plates. I guess I could also could have done it in green. I want to say like the basic Lego sets, you know, like a big bucket that kids get a lot. The base plates in those are green. I guess I could have done a green base, base plate. You know what? Maybe it would be easier just to do this. See, I'm just discovering faster and faster ways to color all of it. And then I'll go back over the top and then They'll be all colored. And I can turn it around and I can come this direction. Hi, Soph. I can hear her walking through my craft room. That actually might have made it more messy. I have no clue. <laughs> Sophie, come here. I'll be able to redefine these shapes and make them real circles again when I do the shadow, hopefully. But for now, I'm going to go back to very carefully <laughs> go tracing each circle because I think I get a better circle if I do that, if I trace them individually. So I'll just go around and get them individually. All right, I'm gonna turn on some music. Um, let's see here. <laughs> let's see. Public, let's see, where, where, where? 
Ooh, what was the one that we listened to on my member live that we really liked? Happy Acoustic? Ooh, Relaxing Piano. I don't remember what it was. I must have been happy acoustic. Hold on, I bet my sound is really, really loud, so I got turned down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Amber's asking, could you lightly emboss this by running the plate in the envelope through the you know, you probably could. But you might have to like cut out the dot stencil multiple times and get it like really thick. We need like instrumental. We don't want people talking. Okay, so where are we gonna... <laughs> Okay, well, this will work. waiting for my Copic marker to run out or something. Might have to uh, refill my marker at one point. I was trying to figure out if there was a more efficient way of doing this background. I don't think there is. Well, possibly you could like ink blend the entire background one color and then use white pigment ink for just the dots. But then you can't, like it would be really messy to add the shading outside of the dots. I don't know, I was trying to figure it out. Maybe I gotta think it through some more cause there might be a better way to do it. Oh, 
Oh no, my hand is starting to cramp up. This is not a good time, Christina. <laughs> You're not even halfway. This might be one of those situations where I, I'm gonna <laughs> color the area up here in this corner so I can put the postage stamps on it. <laughs> And then I'm going to have to like turn off the live and be like, sorry guys, I'm going to have to finish this later. What? They have a layering stencil that does this called building blocks? What? Okay, I'm going to have to Google this. I'm wondering how you would get the shadow outside of it though. I've got to look at this building block stencil. Oh, I can't, I can't click on it. Hold on. Okay, I'm going to look at this thing. Oh, it does, it's not the overhead of the building blocks. Sweet. It's like the side profile, that's cool. I just realized that because I'm doing all of this with Copics and white gel pens, that this envelope will be essentially waterproof. Or water resistant, I should say. almost got like a third of the stencil or the envelope done.
it helps that there's that big black box on the side that takes up a good portion. Christopher just texted me. Ooh, that one is really cool. It totally is a layering one. That's sweet. Yeah, it would do, kind of do what I'm doing here. And you could put white over the top. circle. Oh well. loud enough for you guys I mean I don't want it to be so loud that you can't hear me talk
Oh, good. Sika says the volume's perfect. So interesting, I'm getting like wet spots. I don't know if it's because I'm not ink blending right away or what. Or it could be the sign of my marker getting dry. I guess it could be the envelope paper that's doing this. You gonna come see the envelope I'm doing? My husband's like trying to creep through the room and be quiet. There's a one I just looked at on your YouTube channel that's awesome. Oh, you were watching it? I just saw part of it. That's fantastic. Sweet. I mean, it's Lego. Of course it's good, right? That's right. He likes Lego. He, uh, he likes to find used Lego sets and then he holds on to them and then resells them at a profit. He'll also buy new Lego sets like that. Almost like an investment. <laughs> Sika says hi. so close y'all and then I'm just gonna like do a blanket coloring for the light shade over the whole thing and I think that will also help blend out some of these weird spots seriously I should zoom out so you guys can see like there we go how long have I been doing this <laughs> I think I started it yesterday just kidding Of course, now I figure out the fastest way to do this. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm discovering if I keep my brush not tipped to the side, but almost completely upright, then I can go around the circle easier. Oh 
come I wear that so much faster? Then you just go through and fill in the gaps. shake out my hand you're gonna put a velvet rope in front of this oh, do I get a little one of those little uh, white placards next to it on the wall <laughs> with my name and it'll be like building block mail art 2024 alcohol markers <laughs> in a museum quartered I wouldn't have run out of time for starting. I probably would have colored all this part beforehand, you know? But I guess this just goes to show really how time consuming stuff like this can be.
time consuming like Lego can be time consuming. My husband and I have been working on the Lego grand piano for like a month. <laughs> you know, just here or there. We're almost done though. Erica, I wouldn't be surprised if it did start to die, but no worries, I have refills. So I can just do a little spot, re-ink, just enough to get me through. circle got really small somehow. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I think once the shading is on here, I think it will cover a multitude of sins. Oh my word, you counted how many circles there are? <laughs> Laura, oh my word. Let's just say the edited replay of this is probably gonna be only five minutes long. <laughs> I'll just skip over all this part. crazy thought. I was like, maybe I should make a card to go with this. I could. There is no time tonight. <laughs> so close <laughs> I should send him an empty envelope <laughs> yeah sorry sorry Christopher no time for a card <laughs>
so close. I think the most time consuming part is the, the area around the dots. So even though there are a lot of them, I think even adding the shadow will go quicker than this. go to the lighter shade which is N1 and I'm just going over all of it like this and it will somewhat soften all the blending around it and then we'll redefine things with the the shadow. Actually, it looks better if I do this just individually. I feel like I should use the chisel tip. Sorry, that scratching sound is not pleasant. I'm like, can I just go? Sort of. I think it shows too much. I think I'm going to have to individually color each one. That's okay. Let's go on faster. <laughs> some hand <laughs> stretching exercises. I mean, seriously, look at this. Okay, Christina, loosen your grip. <laughs> Very loose. That does feel better. for that. So I'm hoping I can I do 
have to slow down to do this part. But it's going to help redefine all the shapes that got a little wonky. I'm going to take a little break and go back to the medium color. You will be holding your breath. Don't forget to breathe. Yeah, I'm breathing. But I might get, I'm gonna stop, have some water. Might need a stronger drink. <laughs> I do like kind of finishing up one little area and then I'll move on to the others. Those sort of almost look cartoonish. It's kind of fun. My gel pen is being weird. There we go. Sometimes if your gel pen is just being a little stubborn, you can scribble on your hand and the warmth and oils from your hand help it. postage stamps are going to cover a lot of these so I'm going to put them on and then I don't have to worry about doing shadows and highlights <laughs> Push your stamp on yet. Push your stamps on yet. I'm gonna make you wait <laughs> to see what they are. <laughs> Molly, you all got drinks long ago. I love it. Alright, 
I'm also going to do a shadow under that. And right there. Sophie, as I like to say, she is singing the song of her people. I think like mentally it's helping me to do these in sections. Sophie, come here, girl. Come here. Come visit us. Come here. I'm going to go, I'm going to do the white gel pen all at the same time. So I'm just going to skip that for now. I don't know, maybe this is taking just as long as doing the coloring the in-between sections. I'm definitely not being as careful or precious as I was before. I'm 
going to see if I can take this light shade and push. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes you can get it to kind of push the color. Yeah, there we go. That works. Just checking the um, music. What is it playing right now? Nope, that is not it. We're going to switch to some J. The song that is playing is by Richie Everett.
thinking. Yeah, okay. Postage stamp time. All right, you ready for this? These are the postage stamps. We've got, they're on like a post-it note strip. We've got Snoopy, a goldfish, Bart Simpson, and Batman. Ta-da! <laughs> All right. Sophie! All right, we'll just go ahead and put Batman on. Sophie! And then I can just color in, in but like around the stamps. And once again, this is way too many postage stamps. You do not need this many. But this is what I do. <laughs> I like to curate a collection of postage stamps that go together. Okay, so there you go. See, now the color scheme makes sense, right? All right, I'm glad I did that because that eliminated like almost four rows. <laughs> We're getting so close, y'all. And all I have to do is add the highlights. Once we got past that main coloring, it's actually gone really fast. Sophie, come here. Someone in the comments just said they thought it was an actual baby crying. Thank heavens it's not, just my cat. I want to say like some scientists said that like cats meow like that to mimic babies. I don't know if I believe that, but I do believe what they say that um, like left to themselves, cats don't meow. They meow as a way to communicate with humans and maybe other animals like hissing and growling and stuff. So, um, yeah, they don't talk amongst themselves with meowing. I really think it's worth it going over it with this medium shade because it does soften the shadow just a little bit. And I don't even mind that these other circles are like messy because this is like, it's sharp and in focus. I think that makes it look even better. Okay. Back to the white gel pen. And it really doesn't want to cooperate with me. 
I have these other white gel pens. Maybe I'll try one. People have told me that the Arteza acrylic markers are good. Obviously, I have yet to use it because it's not open. <laughs> uh, Jay Ocon is asking if co postal workers have said anything about my mail art. You know what? No one's has said anything other than ones online that see it that, that say, oh, that's so fun. I would love to see that. But I don't. Okay, okay. Let's see. Shake, pump, and then draw. Okay, so it really is like a full-on acrylic pen. Okay. But people say it's really, really good. Okay. Okay, that might be a little too, too much white. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe it'll stop being blobby the more I use it. Yeah, that does, it does get better. Okay. Let's try that again. It's not really very opaque. Maybe I need to shake it more. Yes, I do have some Posca pens that I've tried. Okay. What? This is like not opaque at all. Okay, back to gel pen. Maybe I'll just, I've got like three gel pens to choose from. So maybe I'll just swap to one of the other ones. Yeah, this one's better. Back to my old standby. Oh, I forgot to do the shadow on this too. I need to do that. Hold on, one moment please. I'm just like mentally preparing myself and accepting the fact that I'm later going to find one like circles that I forgot to put a shadow or a highlight on. It's inevitable. markers out of the way.
also considering adding some white highlights onto the colorful bricks, like the straight sides and whatever. I think that could also help. Almost done with highlights. And then I get to do the street address. Then I'm going to do Yeah, don't misspell anything, right? <laughs> Oh, I like the highlights on it. It looks great. It makes them stand out even more. All right, street address and Christopher's name. Okay. I'm just gonna make sure my gel pen is really working. <laughs> and I'm thinking. Getting near the end here, y'all. <laughs> this is the address to the Brutus Monroe store, by the way.
Just the zip, just the zip. Here we go. Ta-da! Finished. And then I'm gonna have to put my address on the back flap. Apparently my desk is dirty. <laughs> oh well. All right, so I need my good black pen. Where did you go, black pen? It's hiding. All right, I'm going to use the forbidden pen because it's not available for sale anymore, but I love it. And this is just my mailbox address. It is not my home address. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I was gonna do. Okay, let's take out the paper that was inside. Oh my word, look at that. Totally bled through. You can see where everything was overlapping quite a bit. That's hilarious. All right, I'm gonna fix this eye right here. There we go. All right. All finished. Oh my word. That was like an hour. Oh, you know what? It probably was more like two hours and 15 minutes total because I had to make that little dot template and then trace all the circles <laughs> and all that. I almost want to add more shadow from the colorful blocks. Bear with me. Just cause they were looking like they needed more definition. Like there would be more more shadow because they're standing up, you know? Yeah. I like that. Shadow around the stamps? Uh, I'd be afraid I'd go over the little bumps on them. Did Betsy come in? I didn't see her. I saw Diana, where's Betsy? Thank you, Christopher, Rockstar. All right, add more shadow on this. Oh, and I probably need to do a highlight on the black flat Lego piece. Sorry, I know I should just walk away, but I just, it's bugging me. There we go. Such a small detail, but it needed to happen. All right, that's it for tonight. For all of you who stuck in there through the whole thing, like you are rock stars, like for sure. Thank you all for joining me. This was definitely a labor of love. Christopher, we love you. Basically, I'm realizing I wanna soften this shadow now. Seriously, I cannot walk away. 
Um, and I wanted it darker, but I also don't want it so sharp. You know? Okay. Now I think I really do have to walk away. And then I'm gonna take a picture of this so I can change the thumbnail. <laughs> All right, yes, Christopher, we're having a Lego day. I've just gotta pick out what Lego I'm gonna work on. Um, thanks so much for joining me tonight, y'all. This was a lot of fun. And um, hopefully um, I'll have an actual stencil month card for you <laughs> on Wednesday. Andrea, no, he's, he's bopping around the house. <laughs> I'm not sure what he's up to. I should go figure out what he's up to. All right, y'all. Have a lovely night. I will see you on Wednesday for a regular video. Thanks for joining me.